Pat, congratulations. It was 116 to 16 points in the end. Ballyhale go through to the All-Ireland final against Dunloy. You must be very happy after that one. Yeah, very, very happy and very proud of the lads. You know, absolutely. Uh, we came here today with a job to do. That was to get to an All-Ireland. I think there might have been a little bit of... Uh, you know, a reflection of that, that this, this was only a semi-final and that's what today was about. We've got to an All-Ireland, we've won nothing, we've achieved uh, our goal for today. And coming into this game, you don't ever ride off Ballyhale Shamrocks, that's for sure. But coming into this game, I think maybe some people thought that Ballygunner, they've been playing the better hurling this year. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with you there, to be absolutely honest. Um, that, that might have been the speculation of the press and some of the experts out there. We know the quality of the Ballyhale players, absolutely. I mean, people have questioned, we haven't put two halves together. I think today we answer a lot of those critics. And you really stepped up today, I thought, tactically. You got it right. A lot of the matchups, they, they really worked out defensively. You were solid. Yeah, very, very solid. You know, I think our full back line coming into this game, everyone would have said we'd be under pressure. Our half back line would have been said, run at them, they're under pressure. I think today we showed the character we have right across the team. But yeah, I'd give huge praise to our full back line. Young Killian Corcoran in there, only 18 years of age, you know, marking another young superstar. But I just, he, he proved he could put it up to anyone. And you went in level at half time and then in the second half it was really 40 minutes gone that you really got that purple patch and there was two penalties. TJ stepped up for the first one, it was well saved and then the second one he made no mistake. Yeah, and like, to be honest, in the first half, we created two good goal chances. Uh, great credit to Stephen O'Keefe. He pulled off some remarkable saves today that probably kept Ballygunner in the game. But at halftime, we felt, look, we can create chances. We are looking the likely team to get a goal. Uh, and thankfully, you know, we created the chances. They kept pushing on and TJ showed um, huge courage, I suppose, and his ability to actually stand up to that second ball and put it away. Yeah, one eight today from TJ. He's just exceptional. He always steps up in those big moments and he almost orchestrates things, you know, all throughout the pitch. And you really need your leaders like that to stand up in a massive game like today. Yeah, I think in the second half, he particularly stood up. You know, he came out around the field, one ball, one freeze, brought lads into the game. But, you know, we, we, have, a, we have a lot of great leaders on that field. I think Colin came in today, you know, with people maybe, you know, all the, all the talk in the press about whatever was said or not said and all of that. I think he answered all his critics today. What, that he wasn't uh, playing as well or what was said? I don't know, there was comments about some comments from last year or the, oh. the previous final, but um, I think the talking was done on the pitch today. And last year, obviously, it was against Bally Hale. It was a last minute goal from Harry Ruddle. Was that in the back of your minds coming in today? I'm sure it was, it had to have been. Um, not particularly, but I suppose with, with time up and three, three points in it and some balls coming into the square, it's concerned that they get a goal. But uh, I think they learned from that, you know, and we were going to close out that game no matter what. And you celebrated um, out there as if you, you know, you were true to this final. It meant a lot. You could see that in your faces. Yeah, the big disappointment last year, like, was ultimately losing the All Ireland. You know, the opponents are irrelevant. Today was about getting to an All Ireland. Today is a semi final. They've got back to where they want to be, and now they want to go on and prove that they can be All Ireland champions again. And in the first semi final today, it was Dunloy, the Bet St Thomas's. Maybe a bit of a shock there. People said, had you looked at uh, Dunloy or St Thomas's before this game? No, to be honest, we don't look ahead that far. Obviously, you know, we have some, some data on some of the matches and county finals, etc. But we haven't done any, any look at that. Today was about winning this game. We have a bit of time now to get our homework together. Obviously, a couple of injuries to get right as well. And I think that was important today as well. We were down two players after 15 minutes. We brought in our subs. They stood up. You know, the last day we got a bit of criticism about not bringing on players. When we needed to bring on players, we brought them on and they did the job. So fair play to them. You'll enjoy Christmas now. Absolutely, yes. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Sarah, a double header here at Crow Park today. The first of the semi finals was St. Thomas versus Dunloy. It was 114 to 13 points in the end. It was Dunloy of Antrim who came out on top and go on to the All Ireland final. A bit of a shock in that? Absolutely. During the week, they were being written off. Thomas has obviously had a big game against Ballyhale Shamrocks last year in the semi final. But lost, you know, with a last minute goal. And for them to come out today, I suppose they thought, probably thought it was a game that they would look to get over and then look at the final, but Dunloy had other ideas. Yeah, they were very deserving of their win. A lot of pace. They came out with a lot of belief here today. And some of those pinpoint passes were so impressive. Really, really liked their distribution today. Keelan Malloy, the goal, which was an exceptional goal in the second half, was just one of, I suppose, the brilliant things that he did all day. His distribution, finding Cole Cunning inside full forward, caused lots of problems for St Thomas's. I don't think they were ready for the pace of that Dunloy attack. 
You mentioned uh, Keelan Molloy. What a goal. I think it's probably going to be one of the goals of the championship. If not, it has to be up there for the goal of the championship. He left two defenders chasing. He'd know on either side of him from Deloitte to you know, lay it off. He knew he had to go himself. He had no catches left. So he just had to do something with it. And wow, he just hammered it home. Super finish. I think the lads in the, in the press box here were suggesting that a more cynical team wouldn't have allowed him to get towards goal. And maybe Thomas will look back on this afterwards and say he shouldn't have been allowed to go so far with the ball because he travelled for a while. And I know I was looking up going, where is the support? Where is the support? And he didn't need it in the end. And a super finish. He didn't allow himself to be hooked. Uh, outside of that, as I said, his distribution today, the way he was able to pick out his inside line, it was a standout point for me for Dunloy. And all those scores came from the defence. They were very defensively solid today. I thought they tactically they got it right, Dunloy. Very, very much so. But I also felt that Thomas's were a bit thrown by the late uh, withdrawal of Dara Burke. They also had Shane Cooney wasn't able to start. James Regan wasn't able to start. Connor Cooney started in midfield. He hurled every blade of grass. He was trying to do 15 jobs for St. Thomas's today. David Burke was sitting back in that sweeper role today. He wasn't as involved in the game as he normally would be. They just didn't seem to have the same cohesion as Dunloy did at all. And it felt like they weren't as focused as them and it showed on the pitch. Yeah, I thought Conor Cooney was exceptional here today. As you said, he was probably doing a hell of a lot of the work in there. But they really held on in the end, Dunloy, and they were well worth their win. They were, and look, an, an amazing score late on from Brendan Smith as well. After that purple patch from Dunloy where they got the goal and substitute Ant McGrath got the point, Thomases did come back at them and they hit four scores from Cooney and Mark Caulfield. Mark Caulfield had some great long-range scores for Thomas as well today. But crucially, Nigel Elliott, Conal Cunning and Brendan Smith finished it out for Dunloy. Like, they shared the load today. Um, Sean Elliott was exceptional as well. Hooking, blocking, got in for the penalty chance as well. There were so many aspects of Dunloy's play that was positive today. I think that's take huge confidence from today. It'll be a massive ask though. It will be a massive ask, but they're well up for the challenge, I would see, from their display today. And you actually, you mentioned the, the penalty, the missed penalty, 18 minutes gone for Dunloy. You know, it could have been a different game. It could have. Now, again, we're talking about Conor Cooney up one end of the field he's back there trying to stop um, Sean Elliott from coming through he genuinely was everywhere he tried his heart out but Thomas is today nine, I think they hit 15 wides Dunloy in the first half hit 9 wides so they could have been further ahead you know it was uh, all level at half time so I think Dunloy if they had lost this game would have been incredibly disappointed with how many wides they had in the first half from St Thomas's point of view 15 wides out in Croke Park on a day. Now, both sides struggled with the free taking. So, it, you know, Conor Cooney had a number of wides from freeze. That would be unusual for him. Like that, Dunloy struggled. Conal Cunning missed a couple of frees as well. I, I just think that the cohesion that was lacking in Tom, Thomas's, Dunloy had it in spades. There was a lot of wides here today. It definitely had a factor on the game, but there was a, a bit of a swirl in wind as well. So that, that played to it as well. But Dunloy, I suppose, they've been here time and time again, but it was Schlopneil that stood in their way a lot of the times in Ulster. And I suppose they took a lot of confidence from beating them. Yeah, and look, there was a lots of, I suppose, impressive performances from Dunloy today. What struck me was they were very organised in the way they moved the ball through the pitch. And even Nigel Elliott, um, wearing 12 for Dunloy today, he has some pace. Like, he will, he could trouble uh, a Ballyhale half-back line. We'll talk about Ballyhale later, but I, I just feel that Dunloy will be better for having Ballyhale in, in front of them rather than Ballygunner, and it's probably to do with the fact that Ballyhale will suit them. They have less pace than Ballygunner. They're, they have the same physique. It, it could be actually a better matchup for Dunloy playing Ballyhale. Yeah, it's going to be an exceptional game, that's for sure. We'll move on to the, the second semi-final. Ballyhale Shamrocks versus Ballygunner. It was 116 to 16 points in the end. I'm not going to say a shock because you never write Ballyhale Shamrocks off. But I suppose coming into this game, maybe a lot of people did think that Ballygunner would have too much. Well, that pace that I was talking about, we saw it in, Ballyh in Ballygunner today in the first half. They nearly flattered to deceive in the first half. Three great scores from Patrick Fitzgerald. They were causing... Ballyhale, lots of bother. Uh, Park Mahoney was getting on lots of ball. It looked like they were the more cohesive unit in that first half. But Adrian Mullen obviously had the two big goal chances. 
Stephen O'Keefe, what a day Stephen O'Keefe had in goal for uh, Ballygunner. Uh, it, an exceptional goalkeeping performance. In the end, Ballyhale had six goal chances and only for Stephen O'Keefe, they could have been looking at a 4-16, you know, to 16 points. So I think my surprise is that the pace that Ballygunner evidently have, they didn't utilise. And Joey Holden had a massive game on Desi Hutchinson. Now, Desi Hutchinson did score three points, but in the second half, it just felt like Ballyhale got to grips with the Ballygunner pace. And that was the makings of Bally, Ballyhale's win. Yeah, it definitely looked like that was an area they targeted. You know, going out today, Killian Corcoran, I think he's only 18 years of age, you know, in there, a cornerback, and he was matching up with the likes of Patrick Fitzgerald in there, who maybe didn't get on a, as much ball as he normally does. Well, Patrick Fitzgerald scored three points in the first half, and then Harry Ruddle was uh, obviously brought in in the last five minutes to obviously try and repeat the heroics of last year. It did just seem like it was a game of two halves for Valley Gunner because they were so focused and they were so organised in the first half. Their distribution was excellent in the first half. And then in the second half, they came out and they just couldn't deal with the physicality of Valley Hale. You know, those goal chances in the second half, it was, it was around 45 minutes. That was the purple patch. Valley Hale went at Valley Gunner. I think Barry Collin, uh, Philip Mahoney, and Shane O'Sullivan all ended up on yellow cards in the space of five minutes. Um, Philip Mahoney obviously took down Colin Fenley. He was on a yellow when he took him down. The penalty was awarded. He didn't get a second sanction. Uh, potentially lucky to stay on the field because in the next breath, Shane O'Sullivan takes down TJ Reid and he gets a yellow. So if the game had gone a different way, perhaps it had been a talking point afterwards that Philip Mahoney stayed on the field on a yellow you know, conceding a penalty so so quickly afterwards. But again, O'Keefe, you know, outrageous save from TJ Reid first time, but Valley Hale couldn't be stopped. They went at them again and TJ Reid buries it. He ends up with one eight today, uh, one one from play. He was down on the pitch afterwards with his wife at Neve and his daughter Harper taking a picture. The man is Croke Park personified. Like it, that second half, the way he organized the game, ran the game, own Cody as well. You know, big, big second half three great scores I think he got three if not four points today it just really worked for them and the only fault I'll have late on we thought Colin Fenley should have put the ball over the bar because it was 116 to 16 points he dropped the ball short they would have gone four ahead there was only one play left in it I'd say his heart was in his mouth thinking if this drops into the square and Bally gonna get a hand on this I'll rue that chance they made very few mistakes in the second half Bally Hill and after Christmas, we have an exciting All-Ireland final to look forward to. Ballyhale Shamrocks versus Dunloy. How do you see this one going, Sarah? I think, you know, my, my head says Ballyhale. I'd love to see Dunloy put it up to Ballyhale. I genuinely think that if Ballygunner had played Dunloy, their pace would have just been too much for them. I do think Dunloy have been given a little lifeline with Ballyhale because they don't have the same pace that Ballygunner have. But... If you were asking me to be able to mark Adrian Mullen, TJ Reid, Owen Cody, contend with Richie Reid at centre-back, it's an incredible ask for Dunloy to do this, but I'd rather be in a final than not. You know, I think Thomas is, will be incredibly disappointed with their performance today, but you can take nothing from Dunloy. They were exceptional today. They were given one opportunity and they've taken it with both hands. And they're frightening, their pace is frightening up front, especially defensively. They were solid as we spoke about. So going in as underdogs, you know, it worked for them today. Who knows? Who knows? But look, I, had, I hadn't even mentioned Colin Fenley there. There is so many areas of Bally Hale's game that is exceptional. And, you know, I, I read a Colm Keyes piece there literally at the full time whistle where he says they are the best club team of all time. So if he's saying that after a semi final, I think. Underdogs is not just a tag for Dunloy, it's an epic tag now for them. So they will be under massive, massive pressure to make this a contest after Christmas. Absolutely, we look forward to that one. Hopefully it's not as cold here in January time. It was Baltic today once again. I'll be in Colombia, I won't give a... <laughs> and I wish I was there too. Thanks so much, Sarah. No worries. Thank you.